Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> so we have a special guest here today, Delta's here. Um, I just wanted to film another uh, vlog type video. I was having so much fun doing all the planty chores that I did last video and I still have a lot more stuff to do. So I wanted to see if you guys wanted to join me. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I was planning on doing today. I, this is a new phone, so I'm just getting used to holding it. So that looks weird, that's why. I have some repotting to do. I did some repotting the other day, but I still have more to do. And if you're interested in watching my rainy day full of planty chores, please keep watching. Welcome to the current state of my plant room. <laughs> We're looking rough out of here, uh, Delta. Careful. Hi. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to add this because this is embarrassing, but this is what my room looks like after filming a couple videos. I bought a couple pairs of new shoes, just threw those on the floor, you know, casually. I was changing out my closet, switching out winter stuff to summer stuff, my closet in the actual bedroom, so hence the hangers everywhere, um, towel for after the shower, you know, a bunch of embarrassing stuff. But this is on my list of things to do today, and I want this to look nice and clean so I can, you know, do the rest of the things I need to do today. So what do you say, Delta? Delta, you want to clean it? You want to help me clean? Let's do it. So this is what it looks like now. And then it's gonna look like to this. Well, it's not perfect, but I just spent like only 15 minutes just cleaning stuff off really quick. Um, I mainly wanted to get this table clean because I like using this table to do all my planty stuff. Um, so I'm gonna get started on that, I think. So one of the first things I wanted to do is talk about this beauty that I just got. I got this from Caffeinated Plant Mamas. They're like a local plant shop here um, owned by two women. They're amazing. And they just delivered this straight to my door, which was so nice. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so since it's a brand new plant, I wanted to check it out, um, take care of it real quick, hit it with some insecticidal soap and then get it into quarantine. So let's go do that. So when I first get a plant, what I like to do is kind of inspect it, see what's going on, um, check to see if it's healthy or not. You never know, there could be something lying underneath or bugs that are just so tiny you wouldn't notice them. Um, so I just kind of check, you really want to check underneath all the leaves. And so far this one doesn't look like it has any damage. Anything that's happening to the leaves looks like it could just be, you know. Normal damage, nothing crazy, and it looks like there's some, you know, hard water stains on leaves, which is totally fine. Um, that happens to me all the time. I do see a little bit of damage, but um, nothing to be super worried about. This looks like it could be copper fungicide here, uh, so just keep that in mind as well. But otherwise, it looks like a super healthy plant, super crazy aerial roots poking out like aerial roots everywhere. I got this for $24, which was a great deal considering back in the day, uh, a couple months ago, back in the day, a couple months ago, I got two cuttings for $20. So I do already have this plant, uh, but when I saw the size and the price, I could not say no. Plant addict. <laughs> um, so I definitely got it. And I think that it is a great deal. So what I'm going to do is um, I took the tag out and I'm just going to look one more time, see if everything looks good. And I kind of am going to check the water a little bit, see if it needs water. It does feel a little bit on the dry side. So I'm not worried about overwatering it because I'm going to be putting this in a super high light spot. My philodendrons love south facing windows. They love a lot of light. I know a lot of people say that they're good low light plants and they are. Um, but if you want the big, healthy, happy leaves, you need to put it in a lot of water. So, or a lot of light, not a lot of water. <laughs> Don't over water. If you want to have super big, happy, healthy leaves, you need to supplement it with a lot of light. So I am going to put it in my shower and I'm going to give it a really, really good um, shower. And I might even rub the leaves a little bit. I just like to get in there and see um, what's going on. So let's do that. I already have stuff in the shower, so I'm just going to kind of shove it to the side 
and focus on this right now. So hold on one second. Okay, so now that I gave this red emerald a thorough wash down, I'm gonna hit it with some insecticidal soap. This is the one that I use. I think I got it from Lowe's, uh, either Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm just gonna spray every inch of this plant as just for preventative reasons. Like I said, I didn't see any pests, but I always do this with plants that I get um, right off the bat. So let's spray it down. Okay, now that she's all thoroughly sprayed down, these are my Jade Skindapsis. Um, I'm just gonna let her dry off for like a minute or two and then I'm gonna put her into quarantine. Okay, so I wanted to take a little break from cleaning. <laughs> I'm one of those people who can only do a task for like maximum an hour and then I get, you know, really bored and I wanted to do something fun. So <laughs> next thing on the list of things that I wanted to do today was I wanted to try creating my first terrarium. Um, I've been watching people make terrariums on YouTube and Instagram and stuff and they just look so satisfying to me. And so I didn't want to make anything crazy because this is my first one. So I don't want to, um, go all out and then not do it right or whatever. So I wanted to try creating like a beginner friendly one. And I thought you guys would be interested if you've ever made a terrarium. Please feel free to drop whether I'm doing it right or wrong in the comments below. I'm sure there's probably people who would do things a little bit differently, but um, like I said, this is totally beginner friendly. I'm doing the most basic of the basic, and um, so this is what I did. I went to Goodwill the other day, and I found these jars that I thought were really cool because there's so many cute terrariums, but I find them to be really expensive. And I just didn't want to go all out on something that I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, like doing. So I thrifted all these cool containers at Goodwill the other day. I found these two really cool ones. They have like pretty, I'm sure you cannot see it, but it has like a mountain log cabin farm scene or something on the front. And I really liked it because it has this little screw on lid, which is cool and you don't have to have a lid for terrariums I was doing some research about them because I literally know nothing about them and um a lot of them say you don't have to have lids but it just helps create a higher humidity environment if you do so I got two of those um I found this cool guy he just has a little lid these are all really small so I'm probably only going to put one plant in each of these max um but I just thought this was really pretty and it has a little lid that I can close so that is what I got. Now I don't know how to close this. Oh, you have to like lift it up. Okay. So that closes like that. And then I got this big one, which was so pretty. It's just this cool little glass jar with this cool lid on it. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to put in this, but this one's a little bit bigger, so I can put something fancy. Um, but I already know one plant that I want to put in one of these. And that's this little tiny baby strawberry begonia. How cute is that? I got this at the Velvet Garden plant swap that I just went to, which was so fun, by the way. I had so much fun that I literally did not film anything, take any pictures, and I kind of regretted it, but in the end I was having fun, so it doesn't really matter. But this is one of the things that I traded for, and I have a one variegated strawberry begonia, but I didn't have a regular one, and I know that they love humidity, so I thought this would be the perfect thing to plant, and it's still really tiny, and it'll be really happy in there. So, which one should I put it in? The issue is, is I know these get pretty big. I mean, I can always move it out after, but I feel like this would be so cute, no? I don't know. They don't really get too tall, which is why I'm saving these ones for plants that get a little bit taller. So I do think that I'm gonna plant it in this one. So upon my research, I realized that there was, you could go like the most complicated crazy version of a terrarium or I've seen people do the really easy versions and those are the ones that I like better <laughs> so this is what I have here um all of them pretty much say that you need some sort of drainage at the bottom because you can't put drainage holes in or whatever so you need drainage I've seen people use LECA I've seen people use rocks or whatever 
I already had these little aquarium rocks. I have an aquarium. Um, I had a betta fish, Peaches. He's no longer with us. <laughs> I suck at keeping betta fish alive, but I'm, I would be willing to get another one. Um, I am ready to get her again. <laughs> Comment below if you're an Office fan and you know what part that's from. But so I took to some of these. I cleaned them off and everything, but they're just regular like white rocks. I have these like decorative rocks in here too, which um, I could use. Oops. But I think for this one, I'm just going to use just the basic white rocks. So it just said that you need a thin layer and it's really only for drainage purposes. So these are pretty big rocks too. I feel like these are bigger than most people were using. But, so that's the first layer. So let me get started on that, I guess. It's gonna make a loud noise. I'm just gonna drop them in. And I'm just gonna do like, I don't know, half an inch or something until the bottom is like pretty covered. Cause you need to have room for the soil as well. Does that look good? I don't know. Maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna take all the decorative rocks out. Okay, so I think that's an ample amount of drainage, right? That's pretty good. So then the next step is just to plant the plant. I've seen people use like, um, uh, what's it called? Not carbon, is it carbon? What am I, what am I thinking of? Charcoal, charcoal, carbon. <laughs> um, I've seen people use charcoal and stuff. I am not. I'm just gonna, you know, go crazy and see if this works by itself. But what I have here is some already pre-made um, mix. I just took regular potting mix and added a little bit of extra perlite to it for some extra drainage. And then I have my plant here and I have a metal chopstick. I see people do this because it's easier than like trying to get your hand in there. So, and what I did not bring was a spoon. So I guess I'm just gonna do one of these babies and just drop the soil in. Do one of these puppies. And I don't know how much I need. See, the soil's already getting all on the bottom. Maybe I should have done smaller rocks, but I'm just gonna kind of make a little layer like that. Oh, it looks so cute already. And then I guess I'm just gonna kind of put this in. I don't know if these are rooted. I didn't even ask. Yeah, they are. They're pretty rooted. So I'm taking these out, taking those out, putting some more soil in. Um, I guess I don't really need that much soil, do I? Because you want it to grow into the soil. And then I'm gonna uh, just gently put these on top. And they're not standing up straight, but that's fine. That's what the chopsticks are gonna be for in the end. Just kind of put these in there, kind of push them in. And then just add a little bit more soil. So let's do that. Make a big old mess. So I just completely covered that one plant. And then use my chopstick and push push the roots down while, while also exposing this plant that I just buried in soil. And, you know, begonias like humidity, so I think they are the ideal candidate for this for my first round because I didn't want anything that's too crazy. Uh, but I would love to try, you know, a calathea or the plants that I have trouble keeping alive. If this is a good method, I will absolutely do it with the other plants um, and know that I have more confidence in keeping them alive in this sort of environment. They look so freaking cute in here. Are you kidding me? Okay, so that is pretty much it. I just exposed the soil or exposed the plant, kind of made it nice and neat. And, oh, I see a leaf that's drowning down there. It's gonna take a while for this to get settled, obviously, but then when it does, uh, the roots will be nice and in the soil and it shouldn't be a problem, you know, keeping this plant together. So I exposed as much of that plant as I could 
I absolutely love it. That was super simple and easy. And I think it is so cute. I can't wait to see. There's still like a bunch of room. You can see, I don't know if you can see where the plant is. The plant only reaches like this line maybe. Um, so there's still a bunch more room and this goes to like this. So it really has this much room to grow. Um, I hope I didn't put too much soil. I don't think I did, but we shall see. I don't know anything about begonia's roots. I don't know if they grow super thick roots, super thin roots, whatever, but we'll see. So um, the last step is to just put a little bit of water. Um, I was watching somebody and they basically just said put enough to like saturate the soil, but not too much. Um, I'm just going to steal water that I had in this propagation jar right here. And I'm just going to really gently pour some in. It feels really weird to put something in not knowing if you're putting enough. Um, <laughs> I don't have any drainage holes to kind of protect me. But I see some water at the bottom. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, but I think that's definitely enough. I am going to put this in a super bright spot. So I think that's the key. You have to have it in a bright enough spot to where the soil has time to dry out. Because if it's just sitting like waterlogged all day, that's what creates, you know, root rot. And it makes it not effective. But I definitely do see some water down there. But I guess that means the drainage is working, right? I think. Because it's only, the water's only like that down. You can see it a little bit. Um, so... Yeah, I think that is it. Bam. <laughs> that was super simple and easy. Now that it's closed, it just has its own little environment. Super cute. Oh, okay. I want to do another one. <laughs> that was my strawberry begonia terrarium tutorial. Bam. How easy was that? I don't even know if I have anything else. I do have my variegated strawberry begonia, um, but I kind of want to see how this does before I do that one because that one's, you know, more rare. Uh, and I don't know if I'm ready to do that one yet. But um, that's the only like humidity loving one that I have. I'm not sure what else I could do. Oh, I know what I want to do. Hold on. Okay, so for this terrarium, I wanted to use this. I've talked about it on my stories before, but I was at a plant shop in St. Augustine. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I was at a plant shop in St. Augustine, Florida, and I found a peperomia leaf on the ground and I took it <laughs> because I was like, I know I can propagate this just from this one leaf and um, look what happened, like dude. This thing popped off. I literally just took the one leaf. It's gone now. It died. But I took the one leaf, stuck it in soil, and kept it consistently moist. And it just popped off with new growth. And I've been wanting to put this one in the terrarium for a while because I know a lot of people um, like to put peperomias in terrariums. So um, I'm going to do one of these. Which one do I want? Do I want the lighthouse or the log cabin? Let's do lighthouse. <laughs> it's just cute. And so basically same thing. I, I'm gonna keep the decorative rocks this time just cause I think they're pretty and I'm gonna fill it up. Okay, so I realized I put more rocks in this one. No particular reason, just, you know, experimentation. I've never done this before. So I put more rocks and now next is gonna be soil. So let's fill this puppy up. Now let's put the plant in. I most definitely did not plant this in the middle and I'm trying to tell myself that that's okay. <laughs> it's not okay, but it's okay. I'm trying to like, yeah, there we go get more in the middle. So I think this is as good as it's gonna get. It looks so cute and happy. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should put something else in here or just kind of let this guy live his best life. I think I'm just gonna let him live in here. I like the idea of having a bunch of mini ones for now. And if I get the hang of that, I'll have, you know, one really beautiful one that I'll make at another time, so. 
I don't want it to move, but this is what it looks like. How cute is that? Um, and again, I'm just gonna douse it with a little bit of water. Um, I'm gonna fill this back up after, by the way. I'm just using it right now. A little bit of water. This plant was in desperate need of being watered anyway. I could tell just by feeling the leaves. Um, so it's gonna be super happy with this. And now that I see water going to the bottom, I am going to say that that is enough. This is a super helpful tool, by the way. Um, if you don't have them, I highly recommend. I just got them, I think, from World Market or something. Uh, we use them for eating, but it's also good and it's super easy to clean off. That is my peperomia propagation. Again, there is water at the bottom, um, so we're going to keep that in mind. I'm just going to look. Um, I did put more drainage this time, so it has a lot of room. So we'll see, I guess. I don't really know. And you have yourself another terrarium. So these are the two terrariums I made today. I think they are so cute and I will definitely keep you updated with the progress and the growth. And um, I know people say like, you'll know when to put more water in. So I'm excited to see and kind of get that intuition. I have no idea when you're supposed to add more water. That's more research that I have to do, but um, I'm excited to see how these grow. I'm gonna put them in a fairly lit area. Um, I don't have to worry about humidity levels because they're already creating their own um, humid environment, but probably right in my windowsill, I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep them either that or out on my balcony, um, which gets really strong morning light. So I think they'll be happy there. Neither of these are like super demanding light plants, Peperomia I have inside and outside, not too much light and they're happy. And begonias are the same way. They just really like humidity. So I'm super excited to see how these go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't realize um, how easy that was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be more difficult, but after watching a couple of videos, I feel like I got the hang of it. So um, let me know if you're gonna make one for yourself and what plant you're gonna put in there. I'm so curious. If I do get the hang of this, I might put my strawberry begonia or my variegated strawberry begonia in this beauty and have it be like its own thing. So let me know. Thank you guys. So let's see what else we're gonna do today. Okay, so something else that I wanted to get done today was that I wanted to propagate this guy. I got this beautiful <laughs> raindrop peperomia from my friend Cheryl. Um, I'll put her Instagram right here. She traded this with me at the plant swap and I was so excited to get it because this is actually on my wish list. Um, they're always everywhere around the big box store. I just hadn't gotten them yet and then I got this one for free. So because I want to start small and kind of make it a little plant, I'm going to propagate this and chop it up a little bit. So I wanted to show you how I was going to do that and um, explain the process a little bit. So the cool thing about peperomia is that they are so dang easy to propagate and they are so easy to propagate because you could propagate them from a single leaf or through a stem cutting. So I might do a little combination of both. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I know that I want a couple cuts so that I can pop them all up together when they're rooted and make a nice full plant. So I already see this guy, um, trying to decide whether I'm going to cut this one leaf or just make this a nice big cut. And I think I am gonna do a nice big cut like this. So I have this one cutting here. And again, I didn't cut anywhere in particular. I just cut along the stem here. So that's one cut. Cutting here, another cutting here. And then these leaves are looking a little bit on the yellow side. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now. So like I said, some of these leaves are looking a little bit rough. I don't usually want to propagate with leaves that are already looking like they're going downhill because um, they're probably just going to die and a leaf will not survive and it won't be viable to propagate. So I'm starting with the ones that I see are pretty healthy looking. I'm going to take this little cut right here. That's a cute little cut. Put that in there. I see a little guy down here that I want to try propagating. I'm not going to get rid of the plant after I take all these cuts, but I think I'm just going to cut it back and um, wait for some new growth to come out or something. Or I'll even try putting like pieces of the stem in a prop box or something. But this entire stem has no leaves on it, so um, 
I'm not gonna be too upset if, you know, it doesn't end up making it. So I took pretty much all the leaves off and the only leaves that are left are the ones that are looking the roughest. So I'm gonna put that to the side. Thank you again, Cheryl, for <laughs> treating me this plant. I absolutely love it. Um, I just wanted to start with something a little bit smaller. So now I'm just going to put my cuts in some water. So I have this one here. Um, Peperomia, I noticed, don't take entirely too long to root. Oops couple weeks at most I'd say so I'm excited to see what happens with this so those are all my cuts um, I'm excited to update you with the progress of them and I think that it's gonna be a super cute plant once it's all rooted and stuff so that was another task that I wanted to do today let's figure out what else I want to do all right so I feel like that's about as productive as I plan on being today <laughs> it's super rainy and gloomy outside so I just want to cuddle up in the bed and watch TV, but really I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be cleaning, laundry, taking Delta for a walk, all that kind of fun stuff. So um, I think that's about all the planty stuff that I'm gonna take care of today. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I tried to make it not as long as the last planty chores video, although I do have more stuff to do. So I feel like those videos are never ending <laughs> and I will find time to make another one. Um, let me know how you feel about them in the comments below. If you are interested in watching more content like that, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube. Thank you so much. I can't believe how much love and positivity I'm receiving on the videos that I'm making. I still appreciate it so much. And I thank you all for watching and leaving me such nice comments. You guys are the best. I think that this was the best decision I could have made and I'm having so much fun doing it. So thank you again. Um, please feel free to follow me on Instagram as well if you'd like to see what I'm doing day to day in my planty life. I do pretty much post there every day um, pictures from my collection and what I'm up to for the day. So follow me on there as well if you're interested. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching and happy planting. Bye. Bye. Rude. What are you doing? Why are you being bad?